When creating a model, in order to compute it, you must include a study. In COMSOL Multiphysics, there are several predefined study types that are available for you to choose from, enabling you to quickly set up and run a simulation. Selecting the appropriate study type is instrumental to conducting the type of analysis desired and obtaining the results and insight you are looking for. In this video, we will discuss how you should go about deciding which study to include in your simulation, show the multiple ways in which you can add a study, demonstrate changing the settings of the study, and when solving, show where you can obtain additional information regarding your model's computation. So when we are creating a model in COMSOL Multiphysics, let's say we are using the model wizard, after we chose our spatial dimension and added the physics to our model, in this case, let's just add solid mechanics. We are then brought to the select study window. The study represents the solver or set of solvers that will be used to compute and solve your model. Here you can see we have a list of several predefined studies that are available for us to choose from. If we click on any of these study types, you can see that we are provided with additional information through a text description of the study. Now at this point, you want to think about the question that is being posed by your model. And whatever that question is, you want to choose the study that is going to best enable you to answer that question. So for example, if we had a problem where the field variables were changing with time, so perhaps we were subjecting our structure to some load over a certain length of time, then we would want to perform a time-dependent study. Or perhaps the field variables in our problem do not change with time, then we could perform a stationary study. Or perhaps we had a free vibration problem, and we wanted to find the natural modes and frequencies of our structure, then we could perform an eigenfrequency study. Or maybe our structure is being subjected to a forced vibration, such as harmonic excitation, then we could perform a frequency domain study. So the list of studies that appears in this list will always vary depending on the physics you've included in your model. Let's say that we had different physics in our model. Perhaps we had electric currents, so we have an electrical problem. You'll see again, we have an updated list of preset studies available for us to choose from. Or maybe we had a fluid flow problem. Once again, we have several predefined study types that are available for us to choose from, depending on the physics that we've added. Also, please note that several physics contain specialized studies for specific physics, such as the solid mechanics interface, for example, if we add that. The linear buckling study is a specialized study that is available for these physics. Or, if we went under the ACDC branch and included magnetic fields, you'll see we can choose to perform a coil geometry analysis study which is a specialized study for the magnetic field physics interface. So the preset study types and other specialized studies available will always depend on the physics you've added. So now I'm going to cancel to exit out of the model wizard. And here I am brought to the COMSOL desktop where we have the thermal bracket tutorial model opened up. You can find this model under the Windows button in the application libraries by going under the Structural Mechanics branch, then under Tutorials, and then by selecting and opening the Bracket Thermal model. So now that we've gone through a few of the different study types, let's run through how you can add the study you want to your model. In the software, there's a few ways you can do this. One way I just demonstrated is through the model wizard after you added the spatial dimension and the physics. You would then choose whatever study you wanted to include 
and then simply click the Done button to be brought to the Comsol desktop. You can also add the study through the Home ribbon tab by clicking the Add Study button or by going through the Study ribbon tab and again using that same button. And this in turn opens the Add Study window. You can also open this window by right clicking the root node and then selecting Add Study. So in the Add Study window, here we can choose the study that we want to include in our model by simply selecting it and then clicking the Add Study button. But I want you to note below the Physics Interfaces and in Study and Multiphysics Couplings and Study sections. And here you can see we have a solve column where we can choose to omit or include certain physics. And you'll notice if we toggle on or off certain physics, consequently the list of study types available updates. So if we were to toggle off solid mechanics, so we're not including this in the study, we have these study types available. For now, let's include all physics and add a stationary study. So notice once I added a stationary study to our model, we have a study one node as well as a study step node containing the stationary study step. So the study node is the central hub containing all the information regarding the computation of our problem. In the settings window for the main study node, you see we have several options which we can enable. For example, we could select the Generate Default Plots checkbox. And this will generate default plots relative to whatever physics are included in your model. So since we have solid mechanics and heat transfer, this would result in default plots showing the stress and temperature respectively. If we also wanted to view a graphical display of our model converging to the solution, we could toggle on the Generate Convergence Plots checkbox. And lastly, if we wanted to store the solution for all intermediate study steps, we could toggle on this checkbox as well. But this is more relevant for when you are performing studies with multiple steps. Speaking of multiple steps, you'll notice when I added the stationary study, this added a study containing a single step, a stationary study step but you can also add additional steps to your study. For example, if we wanted to add a time-dependent study step, we could go under the Study Steps button, select Time Dependent, and then a second study step has been added. And the order in which your study steps appear is the order in which they are computed. So not only are you not limited to having studies containing a single study step, but you're also not limited to having a single study in your model. Perhaps I wanted a second study, a linear buckling study. In this case, let's just add solid mechanics. I could select and add that. Or maybe I wanted a frequency domain modal study. Once again, we would want to just add solid mechanics. And I could also add that. So there's two main ways you can organize your study. You can have your analysis contained in a single study through multiple steps or contained in several separate studies. And each way is useful for different cases. When you contain all the study steps in a single study, this automatically couples the steps. You could also do this with separate studies, although you would need to manually couple the steps through their settings. Organizing the study to be in separate studies is better when you are performing an inherently multi-step study, such as when I added the frequency domain or linear buckling study, both of those contained multiple steps. So after adding the study to our model, we need to define the steps we've added so that they reflect the scope of our problem. So the fields and options shown here in the settings window will vary depending on the type of study step included in your study. A stationary study step is fairly straightforward. And in this first section, specifically the study settings section, this will always vary depending on the study step added. So you can see how it varies in the time dependent study 
linear buckling study step, eigenfrequency study step, as well as the frequency domain study step. So all these remaining sections are pretty much common to any study step that you would include in your study. So if you want to see the results of your model while it is solving, in the results while solving section, you can simply toggle on the plot checkbox. And the plot that will be shown in the graphics window as it's solving, again, is set to default and will depend on the physics included in your simulation. If you were interested in monitoring a certain quantity as the model is computing, you could use a probe and also tabulate the results of that quantity here in the information window section of the ComSol desktop in a separate tab. If you want to choose to include or omit certain physics in your study, you can do so through the physics and variable selection section, simply by toggling off the physics interfaces or multi-physics couplings in the solve for column. By default, all physics are always selected. You also have the option to modify the physics trees and variables for the study step, which is useful for performing and comparing various analyses and if modification is needed between simulations. In the values of dependent variables section, this contains settings for how the software handles physics interfaces that you are not solving for. If you want to grab an initial value from one study and use it for the initial conditions in a second study, this can be done through the initial values of variables solved for settings. Also, if you want to solve for the field variables of the physics you've included in your study in specific parts of the geometry only, you can do so using the store fields and output setting. If you had built multiple meshes for your model geometry, in the mesh selection section, you can specify which mesh to use to compute the problem. Also, if you wanted to perform adaptive mesh refinement or error estimation, you can enable and adjust the settings for this using the adaptation and error estimates section. If you want to perform an extension of your study, in the Study Extension section, you will find several options available. These options will vary depending on the type of study step included in your study. If we wanted to perform an auxiliary sweep, which is valuable for a plethora of use cases, we could select the checkbox and adjust the settings for that. Or if we want to solve for a number of cases with varying loads or constraints, we could use the define load cases setting. So these are all the sections common to most study steps. Let's now demonstrate changing these settings for a few of the different study steps. For example, in the time dependent study, here we want to specify the time duration and any intermediate times that we want to get a solution for. So first we would specify the unit of time. Here we have seconds selected. And then we could specify a range. So let's go from zero to 25 seconds and then obtain a solution at every quarter second. The tolerance setting is where we specify to how much accuracy the solver attempts to solve the problem with the default value being 0.01 or 1%. In our linear buckling study step, here we want to find the critical buckling load that can cause our structure, in this case the bracket, to collapse. So we could toggle on the desired number of buckling modes and then enter how many, which in this case we will leave at the default setting of 1. In the eigenfrequency study step, here we can find the natural frequencies of our bracket and we have several options regarding the eigenfrequency search method the desired number of eigenfrequencies we're searching for which i will update to 10 the frequency unit of measure which we can leave at hertz the specific frequency we want to search for eigenfrequencies around 
as well as the eigenfrequency search method. In the frequency domain modal study step, here we can specify one or a range of frequency values where we want to get the modal response of our structure. So let's enter a few frequency values. Let's do 50, 70, and 90 hertz. And also let's go ahead and add a range. Let's go from 100 to 130 hertz with a step size of one. And again, we have additional settings which we can augment to fit the scope of our problem. So after we've finished setting up the study in our model, we can go ahead and run the simulation. And I just want to perform a stationary study for now, so I am going to disable the time dependent study step. So now we can go ahead and select our stationary study and click compute. So there's a few places in the Comsol desktop where you can obtain additional information regarding your model's computation. While the study is running, you'll notice in the bottom right corner of the screen, we have a progress bar indicating the progress of our study while it's computing the model. We also have the information windows, which includes the messages, progress, and log tabs, which display important information, such as the solution time, mesh statistics, solution progress, solver logs, and when applicable, results tables. Next to the graphics window, you can see we have a convergence plot, and this provides a graph of the convergence of the solution process while the model is running. If you recall from earlier, we toggled on the Generate Convergence Plots checkbox to have this displayed. So after computing the model, you'll notice that under the Study node, we have a Solver Configurations node. And this contains the solver sequence for our simulation, including several nodes and subnodes that specify how to compute the model. To show the solver that corresponds to the steps in our study, which in this case would be the stationary study step, we can go ahead and expand that, then expand the solution one node, and here we have the stationary solver one node. Please note that you can also see the solver configurations node and the solver sequence before computing by simply right-clicking the study node and then selecting show default solver. And you can see we have that solving sequence available before having computed the model. So here in the stationary solver one node, we could modify the settings for solving our model if we had good reason to. And if you want to reset back to the default solving sequence, you can do so by right clicking the solver configurations node and then selecting reset solver to default. With that, we have gone over the process of adding a study to your simulation, as well as some additional details. First, we went through the factors which should influence what type of study to add to your model. Then, we reviewed the plethora of predefined study types that are available for you to add in Comsol Multiphysics. Thereafter, we briefly discussed how you can organize your analysis, demonstrated editing the default settings in several studies, computed the model, and pointed out the various areas in the Comsol desktop that provide additional information as the computation is in progress. Lastly, we explored the Solver Configurations node and its settings.